So hello and welcome to the 2018 Prague Special Championships. I'm Lydia Hamba from Limitless TCG and I'm joined by our guest, Benji. Hi guys, very nice to be here. I'm super excited <laughs> and I hope you guys are too. Yeah, we are super hyped today. Uh, we are going to show you nine rounds of Swiss, continuing with top eight tomorrow. So let's see who will make it through today and who we are going to see tomorrow. Uh, we have a very interesting round one match for you. So, Benji, which players are we going to face? Um, it um, looks like in round one we've got Adam Hawkins, our recent Melmo uh, Masters champion, and we have uh, Oyvind, um, who is a player who looks to be playing uh, Zorowak Galissapod. So, yeah. we have two Zorowak decks round one, which is no surprise whatsoever, uh, but looking forward to seeing how this matchup goes down. Yeah, both players are already well known. So both players awesome managed to make their game way game into game top 16 in Europe. Uh, I think Adam today. just uh, is game. out there for a few points, probably yeah. missing some League Cups. But maybe he can change it today already. Uh, so Ivan will be playing a Zara Glycopod deck, uh, which uh, I heard a lot of players will be playing today and he's going to face uh, yeah, Adam Hawkins is going to be taking his very similar Zorowak Weavile deck. Uh, this is the deck pretty much that he piloted all the way to first place over in Melmo, and he's hoping to redo that today pretty much and take it all yeah, the way. I guess never change a running system. Exactly. I mean, the deck looks really solid, and it doesn't look like he's changed too much at all, so I think he might be in for a really good deck. Yeah, and it looks like our players are ready to start. Um, so, let's go into the game. Uh, we see Ivan with a Tapu Coco start. Uh, it's actually the best start you can, you, know, you can hope for. You have an attacker, you can already deal some damage with a double colorless energy. And as Tapu Coco has free retreat, it's a good Pokemon to have in your starting spot. Yeah, I mean, normally, even if there was a Wimpod in there, you'd normally see the Tapu yeah. Lele come down as he saw bridge it and then just sort of win and get that Tapu Coco up in the active spot as early as possible but really lucky there to start with it right off the bat and it looks like Adam doesn't yeah. even need a bridge on his side of the field yeah he, it looks like he drew a lot of Pokemon uh, I'm I'm actually surprised to see what other ha cards Adam has in his hand because usually if you have a lot of Pokemon in your hand well it's not so sure if he has a supporter card available yeah, I think he's probably put his hand down just to sort of yeah. perhaps hide the fact that he might not have too much in his hand. But hopefully he's got a supporter there so he can switch his Pokemon around or switch his hand around, something like an N or a Cynthia. Yeah, maybe. Uh, we see Ivan putting down three Sorua. Um, yeah, it's actually maybe he's trying to be safe because of Weavile. Weavile deals. Uh, damage uh, according to the amount of uh, abilities you have in play and as Wimpot has an ability you don't really want to put too much Wimpot on your band. Yeah that's true uh, he obviously in this matchup he's gonna need to rely on Galissapod to be taking those knockouts on Weavile quick sooner rather than later realistically otherwise it's gonna start doing out a lot of damage output with all those Zoroarchs on his field and Adam does pass his turn straight away Wow. Uh, doesn't look like he has anything in hand. Yeah, it looks like my guess wasn't that bad. And Oyvind continues the tempo as he puts down an Ultra Ball, I imagine, to grab himself his first Heroic here yeah. in order to start using that trade ability yeah. and move forward and develop his board state slightly more than he already has. Um, this is the second deck search, and guys, in case you haven't noticed already, we are the first grassroots stream who was able to bring you a prize cam so below the battlefield you can see what cards are prized yeah i mean it's super exciting to be able to have a prize cam obviously looking at the prizes um or even does have a guzma n and sycamore one one of each of his important cards in his deck all prized while we're looking at adams where he also has a guzma and a cynthia prize so both players not the most ideal prizes realistically yeah but still it's something you can draw out of your prize cards and it's not too bad to draw a uh, guzmas in the late game or later because you just don't need guzmas at the very beginning and we see Oyvind take his first prize there, knocking out the Zorua using that DCE and the Riot is beaten attack. 
and Adam does attach a DC and does get an N, so he will shuffle in and hopefully he can pick up the tempo and hopefully find himself as a row arc so he can actually start applying some pressure back. And you can also see him discarding two Bridgets. Usually Bridget is a card you want to start with, but uh, as you already mentioned before, Adam wasn't really in need of a Bridget as he had a lot of Pokemon on his starting hand, so that was really not the support he wanted to see. Yeah, I mean, it's really good that he's able to get those into the discard early on. It means that he's not going to bump into them now off of his end. And obviously, he's going to be able to find himself perhaps some more important cards and more consistent cards. And he does find the Zoroark, which does mean that he's pretty much back at the same pace now. So hopefully, he can start trading into some cards to move himself forward. Yeah, uh, it's quite interesting to see that Ovind is playing a pseudo voodoo. So, uh, yeah, do you think that could swing the match around or, um, well, I think the pseudo weirdo counter energy has definitely been put into the deck literally just to uh, beat Zoroark essentially um, it's a tech that I think I saw first time in Eagle Costa's list in America um, after that it's picked up quite a lot of traction and now you see it becoming increasingly more popular however uh, Zoroark GX is all about consistency and it does bring that down slightly so it all depends on how often he's able to benefit from having that rather than be hurt by it but still, it's a very good price trade. You have a one price card attacker uh, with the potential of paying out at least one Zoroark GX, which is quite good. Definitely good. I mean, especially when Adam's deck fully relies on Zoroark in order, order to obviously keep up his tempo and continue to draw the cards he wants. Yeah. If you're able to knock one of those out with a Suda Wudo, then you're definitely going to be in a good position for the rest of the game. Yeah. Uh, we see that there's a parallel city in play. And but both players have... It looks like... Looks like Adam hasn't yeah. actually noticed. Uh, Adam hasn't noticed that there is a parallel city in play, so uh, we should get someone to fix that. Oh no, parallel city isn't in play anymore. Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, field blur, oh, obviously, yeah. yeah. Yeah, true, okay. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, well. that's his discard pile. <laughs> that is oh. so confusing. Literally, I thought that was I thought it was right in the right spot for a uh, stadium to be in, so that looked very misleading. Um Oivan has really built up his board state this turn, grabbing his third zero arc. Uh, his poor does look a lot nicer than Adam's right now. Yeah. And I think that he's definitely in a position where he's got a lot of control over the game, and I think it might take an, a miracle on Adam's side of things in order to pull this back in his direction. Yeah, Ivan really had a head start here. He had way better uh, opportunities at the very beginning, whereas Adam really started with almost nothing. Yeah, I think with the Galissa part as well on the bench, it also shows Adam that, you know, there is the pressure for Guzma, as we've just seen with the grass energy. And as I said right at the start of the game, the Galissapod comes in and takes out the Sneasel and the threat of Weavil early on, meaning that Adam now has to try and work out another game plan as he's not going to be able to get Weavil out this turn in order to do a, a lot of damage. Yeah, and we see Adam, uh, well, he has a Zorag, uh, well, two Zorag in play. Now he has some uh, to trade it abilities available and uh, well he needs to see what he's going to draw into and how he can set up his board state a bit better uh, right now he has only four Pokemon in play uh, which means righteous beating isn't really doing a lot of dealing a lot of damage yeah I think that obviously looking at his list here we have two Sneasel and two Weavile um, obviously Adam has just lost one of the Sneasels and discarded the Weavile off trade so the chances of him being able to set one up pretty soon could be quite low on his side. Well, he has puzzles for the Sneasel back, so that sort of nullifies exactly what I said. Um, but he puts those two down on the bench, obviously hoping to get the Zoroark for next turn and being able to draw on that Weavile. He's just really got to hope that Oivin isn't able to get Guzma and knock out that Sneasel again because I think that really does put Adam right on the back foot if he loses it for the second time. Yeah, but I think that that's what uh, Ivan knows, and he's trying to dig for that Guzma. Um, so, let's see. It looks like he has some uh, options. 
Well, if he can't get the Guzma, what other plays could he do? Uh, you saw that he drew the DCE there, so I don't think it would be a bad play at all to armor press this turn. Um, he or use his GX attack and return to the bench, hoping that his Galissapod stays safe for this turn. Obviously, attaching that choice ban will take his GX attack all the way up to 180 damage if he does choose to do so. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, it, yeah, it looks like he does like use he the GX attack, returning yeah. to bench. Um, obviously, putting up that ta Tapu Coco, so he's got free retreat now for his next turn, um, giving him a lot more options, being able to first impression again for the full 120 damage, or with the choice ban 150 if it doesn't get removed this turn by Adam. Yeah, maybe he's also, uh, well, I think it was a safe play to uh, prevent his Golisopod of getting KO'd. He plays two Isorolas and one Max Potion, so chances of drawing into them are quite high. Uh, we just saw Adam use uh, Mallow. He grabbed a Max Potion, it looked like, and a DCE uh, to put on the top of his deck. It does mean then that he's able to trade and get those two cards straight in hand. He'll Max Potion that Zoroa, taking it down to zero, and reattach that DCE, uh, fully resetting that and allowing him that now to stay turn. alive. Yeah, it's huge. That's really swung things um, back in his direction as that Galissapod now really isn't able to take a knockout and that Zoroa survives, meaning that Adam still is able to have two trades on board. Um, keeping up that tempo that he has. Yeah, but he also lost one of his double colorless energies. Uh, you are only allowed to play four of them, and uh, yeah, you really depend on them. Yeah, I think that obviously the great thing about these Arara decks, though, is having Puzzler Time really allows you to True. not have to worry about discarding things as much. Obviously, we can see that Adam doesn't have any Puzzles prizes, which means he does, has ac does have access to all four within his deck. So he is able to supposedly mallow. If he does, does he run the second? No, only one mallow. Oh, and so we see one Acerola. And we see Acerola. So a very similar play from Oivan here, resetting the damage on the Zoroark, denying Adam that prize, um, and putting the 120 damage back on. And it looks like Adam's board state has gone back to exactly where it was. Yeah, it's it's insane. Even even so, Adam had not that good of a start. We can see him still being in a very decent position, still being able to deal a lot of pressure. And well, he's not really that much behind of Ivand anymore. I mean, as long as that Sneasel's on the bench, I think that Adam's got a lot of pressure anyway. Ivan's got to really be careful that he um, doesn't get caught out by that Weavile. Um, obviously, it's going to be dealing. Uh, 50, 100, yeah, so a minimum of 150 if he doesn't re-evolve that Zoroark, so obviously if Oivan does play this very smart he won't actually jump back up into that Zoroark with his Zoro with there, meaning that that Weavil can't actually take a one shot on the Zoroark in the active, however if he does put that Zoroark back down yeah. the Weavil's then outputting a minimum of 200 damage, which could really do a lot of damage. Yeah, one potential player we could maybe see in the future is Oivan Grabbing a puzzle, uh, grabbing a parallel city back with puzzles of time, and maybe um, reducing his own bench space and discarding uh, Tapu Lele, for example, to reduce the amount of Pokemon with uh, abilities on his bench. Yeah, I think that would definitely be a good play. Obviously, Weavile is only strong while there are the abilities on the board. Without that, um, Adam won't really be able to do much with it. Obviously, Oivan's just got to really play that smart and make sure that he does play around it because otherwise, if it does catch him off guard, he could find that then Weavile doesn't only take two prizes but could take more than that. Yeah, and we can see Weavile coming into play. It's on the bench now and uh, only it, his appearance is already well, putting some damage and uh, some pressure on Oivan. Uh, Adam picks up his discard to have a look simply because he drew two puzzle then so he's going to have a look what he has access to in his discard and whether right now is the right time to play them and he does drop them down um, it'll be interesting to see what he grabs another max potion oh. of DCE uh, making the same play resetting that Zoroark to zero damage and again putting the pressure on Oivind again to take those next prizes oh and Oivind really isn't looking that happy no matter how much effort Oivind is putting into attacking Adam is just well completely reducing his turn resetting yeah i mean you saw the smile on adam's face there yeah. i think he was really happy to draw into those two puzzle there uh, that really swings things back in his direction so and we see it <laughs> we see it on board or side of the field uh adam you can see the smile on his face and i feel like this game could go on for a good while yeah we haven't seen that many acerolas uh, if i recall that correctly yeah 
Um, let's just have a look. How many max potion do both player play? Um, so Adam only has the one, which does mean that obviously now that he's exhausted all four of his um, his puzzles, it does mean that he's not going to be able to make that play again. Uh, what yeah. about Ivan? Ivan also only plays uh, one max potion, and he has two acerolas. Uh, but he also plays for Puzzle of Time, obviously, and uh, can you recall if we have seen any Puzzles of Time from Ivan's side? I don't think, I don't think we've think seen so. any yet from his side of the field. And Wow, that is a really big swing of the tempo. Adam drops a Kakui, draws his two cards, actually hits into the Devoured Field and the Choice Band there in order to take a humongous knockout on that Zero Arc. Obviously, the Galissapod does come back in, though, and Armor Press, unfortunately, will probably be taking... Um, another prize from the Weavar here, but Adam really swinging things in his direction there on that turn uh, with a very, very well played knockout on that active Zoroa. Yeah, and with the Devar feel and Kukui, those are cards you don't really, well, you don't really have in mind most of the time because not a lot of players are playing it. Yeah, I think it's very different. Oh, wow. And and we see it. We do see the Sudawudu counter energy. Adam uh. going, taking two prizes there and going three to four, which means that that counter energy does become active for two energy. And we, we actually see the tech pay off here. Uh, very, very, very nice from Ivan. Yeah, we see Ivan is only down to two prizes. Uh, Adam is down to three prizes, but... Uh, he's on an in on an uneven count because he KO'd a Tapu Koko early in this game. But now this Sudo Wudu is active, so KOing this Sudo Wudu would actually be a good thing for him. Usually you don't want to KO it because it gives you an uneven amount of price cards you have to draw. But now it wouldn't be that bad. Yeah, I think that um, using that Ace Aroda there as well to pick up that Zero Arc, uh, Adam's reset is board to zero, which means that especially because uh, Oyvind has used his GX attack, uh, he doesn't have to worry about being knocked out this turn and Oyvind taking his last two prizes. Yeah. Uh, looking at his list, it doesn't look like he's got any extra tricks up his sleeve to where he could take a knockout that turn. So Adam is actually in a strong position here to where he's able to knock out the Pseudo Wudo with um, that Galissapod still damaged, so hopefully he can hit that Guzma and hopefully take his last two prizes. Yeah, and we see Adam also having a look at Oivan's deck because it's uh, really down to only two or three cards, if I can see it correctly. So, uh, but probably Oivan uh, saved some ends. Uh, he's going to play this round or next round to not get decked out. Uh, yeah, he really doesn't have many cards in there, does he? He's really been using that trade ability yeah, he's really playing the trading card game. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> definitely in the trading card game. Uh, he does have two puzzle in hand, though, which I hadn't previously known. He's got a pretty hefty hand, um, pretty big hand. So he does have to double puzzle. It'll be interesting to see here what he can actually grab. Obviously, now both players are equal on prizes. Yeah. The Pseudo Wudo and Counter Energy can't actually be used. So... Um, it'll be really interesting to see what he grabs with this double puzzle. He's going to play the double of double puzzle. Yeah, checking his discard pile and oh, we see Guzma max potion. We see the max potion. I think if he max potions the Galissapod here, I think it might be a really smart play because it yeah. does mean that he uh, nullifies the effect of Adam's Guzma here to take the last two prizes that he needs, uh, either with uh, Weavile or. Uh, Zara work. So we do see the max potion. Yeah, it's um, something he had to do to keep yeah, in this game. I think that he would have been uh, very vulnerable to the Guzma otherwise, which obviously yes. with Adam being able to use trade, it's quite likely of him hitting. He does put the grass energy back down onto Galissapod though, and I think we might see. He's evolving. Another Zara work. Wow, I think that's quite a dangerous play. I think he's it now all is. the way up until 250 damage. Uh, from Weavile. Um, I think that Adam will definitely see that and try to take advantage of that as much as possible. He played an Ultra Ball um, uh, to grab nothing, which is quite interesting because he's really... Well, his, his deck card count is quite low. Oh, we see... Yeah, okay, we see Guzma on the Weavile. We see Guzma on the Weavile, which does take away Adam's main win con here. Um, however, I think Oyvind only has one card in deck, right? Um, which means that I don't think he can... It could be that he still has a Guzma in deck and that's why he also played the Ultra Ball. So in case he gets end, he makes he makes sure that he's able to draw into the Guzma and has no unnecessary cards in his yeah. deck. 
so uh, but let's see if that really was his strategy um, now it's Adam's turn again we see him trading oh. and Adam also oh wow the mind jack will come in here with a choice band and that is game that is game uh, mind exactly. jack putting out a hefty amount of damage there on that tapu lele getting adam game i think that's really the strength of adam's deck as yes, well yes it is um, being able to have that uh baby's arc as well and taking a hefty amount of damage there at the end yeah that was an intense game one and uh, i'm very happy that we were able to bring you that such an interesting game in our very first round yeah, it, it very much swung back and forth. Obviously, yeah. we saw Adam have a very slow start there. Um, not not needing Bridget, but it turned out that that actually wasn't a good thing for him. Um, only <laughs> hitting the end turn two. Uh, but then we did see the tempo swing back in his direction with some very smart max potion plays. And obviously, I think that's what ended up winning in the game. Yeah. Denying Oivin prizes while he set up his Weavile. And then obviously, I don't think Oivin played around that mind jack. So, and I don't think he saw it coming at all, to be honest with you not really i think adam plays a lot of cards you don't really see coming he plays this mind jack zorak he plays um devour field he plays uh one copy of kukui so those are cards that can add some damage and there's they really fit into this deck very good and uh, it's also a very unique strategy adam is using here in it looks like it's working very good i mean it worked perfectly in malmo taking him all the way to first place as we previously mentioned so i don't see any reason why it wouldn't go just as well today yeah. that kakui and that devoured field taking two prizes that oivin really didn't expect to lose as well as that mind jack zero arc um lots of tricks up adam's sleeve and a really interesting deck to watch to be honest with you because the weaver puts on a lot of pressure mm -hmm. um oivin then is forced to either play around it or take a lot of damage uh, there's no sort of in between there that he can do with weavile you either fill your board with your trades or you take a lot of damage that's it yeah. you know yeah it's you don't true. do it uh, so but with the weavile there and then obviously the mind jack as well Oivin might now feel more inclined not to fill up his board so it'll be interesting to see how this game goes and to see if Oivin, now that he knows that there are things such as devoured field there are things such as kakui in his deck whether he'll be more ready for those this game yeah the first game is probably uh, mostly like uh, you see what your opponent is doing well after a few rounds you can ask around like hey you know what my opponent is playing can you tell me maybe a bit about his tech cards but in the very first round you have no clue what you're going to face uh, we see a mulligan there from oivind uh, giving adam that extra card at the start yeah uh, we have 30 minutes like uh, well half an hour left for the last two games um well do you think we're going to see a full series of best of three um i would imagine not i think that it all comes down to uh, whether oivin this game can pull things in his direction obviously adam here will be looking to take the second win and obviously overall winning the series but i think if oivin does steal this game i don't think we'll realistically with the ace rollers and the max potions and how long yeah. these games can sort of be drawn out i don't think we'll actually see a game three here unless something really unfortunate happens um one big point that i just noticed is that adam set out his prizes and you see the mind jack zero arc in there um yes obviously like he only plays one of those and one of the break as well so that could actually be pretty bad for him if he doesn't actually draw that off the prizes early on there's also a Bridget in his press cards, but uh, it looks like he's playing two. Uh, oh, he's even playing three Bridget. Yeah, three. So it's not. I think that's good. why uh, all those Zoroark decks have sort of altered to do that, making sure that you get that Bridget out because it's so important to get those Zoroars down as early yeah. as possible. And we, as 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 said, we do see the Bridget again. Um, Oivin going for the same first play that you pretty much see in every deck yes, nowadays, definitely. and getting those basic Pokemon down. I imagine here that he'll go for his Wimpod. Um, Zorua and then most probably the Tapu Koko yeah. to make sure he has that free retreat on board. Yeah, you really want to have that, especially because you want to use um, you want to use crossing card and uh, no first impression uh, as often as you can. And I just noticed that Oivin's not put his prizes on the prize cam oh, and put yeah. them on the side. Yeah, but our support David just fixed that. <laughs> but still um, 
it's not too bad. Uh, he didn't grab the Tapu Coco there, which obviously we can't tell because the prizes haven't been there. But I think it might be prize because it seems very weird that he wouldn't draw that off the Bridget. Um, we see a puzzle in there, which could be... Yeah, yeah, yeah so it's the Tabu Coco is in there. Some oh, some really ugly prizes there for Ivan. Uh, we oh. see one puzzle there. We see and a it's DCE. His last prize. Um, yeah, it is in the order he's going to be drawing them on our prize cam. It is his last prize. Um, and a DCE in there as well. And as well as the Tabu Coco. That is really tough. It is. Um, there's also one Grass Energy prize. He's uh, playing three of them. So that's also not, not that good either. Yeah, so really, that's not the prizes he won in a game two when you're one game down. Not at um, all. I think here that Adam definitely early on has the upper hand simply due to those prizes. Um, Ivan won't have access to as many max potions as he did last game because he won't be able to puzzle them back out. And we see the Bridget on Adam's side of the field, as expected. We see plenty of Zora will come down and, of course, an extra Sneasel. And he passes to him back over to Ivan. Uh, yeah, now it's uh, Ivan's turn. Oh, we see him evolving directly into a Golisopod. Uh, it's, it's really nice to see because uh, not only you can evolve one of your weak basic Pokemon, you also have one ability less in game. Yeah, it's um, obviously it, it almost seems, you know, like you want to evolve anyway, but then it also also seems a pretty big necessity in this yeah. matchup, especially when that Weavile gets an extra 50 damage just from that Wimpod being there. So, and we see the DCE come down, um, and we see the knockout on Tapu Koko. Uh, I don't think Adam's overly bothered about that. Uh, he was able to free retreat next to him with the Tapu Koko and play anyway. So, I think that it would have gone to the bench in the first place. But we do see the Zora would come up with a dark energy attached. Uh, he uses Kakui, and I think he uh, oh. might. Using Kukui here is not really what you want to do. It kind of gives away that oh, oh, he's had one to single puzzle. puzzle. Uh, however, that does set the table in a pretty even state. Yeah. As um, obviously, Oivan Oliver, actually drew his puzzle off his prizes. He's gone the other way. So that actually means that he now has more puzzles than yes. Adam does. And we see him retreat and attack with Weavile. For just a hundred damage. One hundred and twenty. Really, oh, with Kukui, obviously, of course. Still, that's not what you want, especially when he's going to be able to take a very easy return knockout on that Weavile. Yeah, and I think I haven't seen any supporter cards in his first three cards, so yeah. Oh, but he's going to draw into an Ultra Ball so he can go for a Tapu Lele or for a Zorog and then use a uh, trait. But depending on... Oh no, he's going to shuffle his deck anyway. Never mind. <laughs> Oh, he's dropped everything. There we go. Um, draws that, uh, putting that Ultra Ball to the top of the deck, using that puzzle. He also rescue stretches those Weavile and Sneasel, as we said, pretty integral cards in this matchup. And he throws them straight back in his deck, ready to be used again late game. Uh, of course, he does Ultra Ball for the Tapu Lele here, using N, taking Oivind all the way down to a four card hand and himself up to six. Yeah. I think here that Adam really needs to have a really high tempo turn. He needs to draw into a number of Zero yes. GX. He needs to get a number of his trades off. Energies. And of course, yeah, get a DCE on board ASAP, obviously, as well. Um, the Mind Jack play here isn't actually something that he has access to. So he does just need a Zoro GX and energy. And then just hope that he's able to two shot that Zoro in the active. Yeah. And Oivan doesn't have the max potion at hand. That's what you want to see. But we can see that one Zoro GX is priced and also one Evo's Huda is priced, which you could also use to potentially get a Zoro GX and then use some trade abilities. But we see, see the Ultra Ball. Um, yeah. And discarding Mallow. Mallow and Mallow. Um, I think discarding Mallow, especially when he only has access to two more puzzle, could actually be pretty sore here. Um, obviously, last game Mallow came in a big, big, big hand for Adam, being able to grab him that mind jack. So it'll be interesting to see how he survives without it. Yeah, I feel that the, that his hand hasn't really left him a lot of options. He didn't even struggle to play down the mellow. He decided straight away, I, I can't use that mellow. I need to uh, discard it. That's quite interesting for me. Yeah, I think he is definitely in a case with his hand where he knows that perhaps 
two cards isn't enough. He needs more yeah. than two cards in order to get himself back in this game. And uh, using Mallow for only two isn't going to help him at all. Um, but yeah, I think that Mallow is actually a pretty important card in this matchup. So it's quite interesting to see him get rid of that. Uh, he does retreat the Zorak and put up a Lele here, um, optimizing that energy drive attack that oftentimes people forget about. Lele not only yeah. uh, has a really good ability, but it actually does have a really strong attack here mm -hmm. and can be a very good secondary attacker in a lot of decks. That's true. And now we see Ivan playing a Mello. And uh, let's see what he's going to get. Maybe a Max Potion. But I would I don't imagine really a Max see... Potion. Yeah, I don't really see the necessity to Max Potion now. Because... Zorak think, isn't in two hit range, isn't it? I think with it as well, putting the Lele into the active could be a really smart play as well. Yeah. Because if Adam does actually hit into it using Riot's beaten, he's able to Ace Roller it back oh, up off his board, yes. taking away 50 damage here from the Weavile. So actually a very smart play here from Oyvind if he does go for that play. Um, and but, then he had also a potential card in hand to just trade it away because he does not need it anymore. And he can reuse his double colorless energy. And we see Oyvind shake his head here um, at the max potion come down again from Adam. <laughs> um, all of these Zoroark mirror matches I think nowadays um, are very much designed to win the mirror match. And so I think both players can find it quite frustrating as it becomes quite difficult to take prizes without using a lot of resources. Yeah, those are also very accomplished players. They they play a lot of tournaments, they have a lot of experience, and uh, I would assume that they also play test a lot, so they are used to play against these kinds of decks. I mean, if you're not used to playing against a row <laughs> by now, then I don't know where you've been, but the last, the last couple of months has pretty much been full of it. That's true. Uh, I don't think you can go anywhere in the Pokemon community anymore without seeing a black fox with lovely red hair, because... <laughs> it is on every table we see looking around the room. Um, Zoroark is everywhere. So you, would you use the fox emoji for Zoroark, even so it's red? Or would you use the wolf emoji because it's black? Oh, no, no, no. It's got to be the fox emoji. It's a fox. Uh, it's a fox. Okay, yeah. I, I made a Twitter survey for that. And uh, actually, uh, from... Around 250 people, two thirds of the the ones that answered the survey said that they would use the wolf emoji. Oh, okay, there we go. I'm but then. I don't know where you guys are because to everyone I talked to in person, they said they prefer the wolf emoji. But Oyvin <laughs> has double puzzle in hand. Um, being able to use that here could be really, really good for him. Yeah. Um, I hope that he does go for the play I previously mentioned. Uh, not retreating with that Lele to do extra damage with the Lissapod. He's got no need to. Um, the only thing that could knock him out here is Weavile. And I hope he does grab the Acerola. So yeah. um, he's going to pick up that Zoroa, taking off the extra 50 damage. Meaning that now nah, Weavile can only do 150 unless he hits the Choice Band. What? Ah. Uh... Oh yeah, he discarded the double colorless energy to retreat. Uh, he did not pick up the Zebra because he directly puts it onto Spent again. And, and he parallels yeah. himself. Really, really, really big play there. Paralleling his board down to just one Zero Arc, nullifying that Weavile completely. And Adam has to be very worried here because that Galissapod is there doing a hefty 120 damage, putting on a lot of pressure. And Adam just simply isn't able to respond this turn. Yeah, that was a huge turn. You could also see Oivin taking a bit of his time to to do his turns, to do his actions, because he knew that he he wants to make sure to do everything in the right order. Don't doesn't want to mess things up. But now he's in a really good position, and Adam now has to react to that. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if both players start to speed up their pace of play now. Yeah. Um, Adam knowing that here he's quite backed into a corner. I'd be very surprised to see him pull off a win in this game now. Uh, Oyvin seems very far ahead at the minute. But the Acer Roller again denies more prizes. And I think that Adam might just want to draw this game out as long as possible. Hoping that he just does pull the series out at 1-0. 
Yeah, uh, we know that there is a big clock in uh, the hall. Players can see how much time they still have left, but uh, hopefully we will rather see some Todd Radcliffe really fast plays and flying Turbo cars. Turbo Todd, of course. <laughs> uh, Adam just start, just hopefully Adam starts throwing cards at Oyvind. Um, and Oyvind does take a look at his discard. I imagine that he's just taking a look at how many max potions, Ace Arolas yeah. and stuff that he and used. And puzzles of time, of And of course, course, he spots the Mallow in there. So that again shows that we were quite surprised that that ended up in the discard pile because yeah. it's a pretty important card. Yeah, it's also, uh, I think, an interesting point to mention that neither of those players is playing the Oranguru with resource management. Uh, so yeah that would also be a potential chance to get back some one some of your resources uh, i think the attack name is also quite fitting yeah uh, resource management of course is important in a trading card game and uh, being able to to put cards from your discard pile back into your deck and play them a second time is really huge um yeah but both players maybe may have found out that Oranguru isn't working in their decks. Their decks are maybe too fast, or they just don't have good opportunities to use them uh, to use the Oranguru. I think that especially with Adam's deck, you already have um, the Zoroark break line yeah. as well. Um, some could even say that his deck is slightly more inconsistent and slightly more clunky than yeah. perhaps your regular Zoroark build. So, oh, we see the Guzma here pulling Ooh. up that Tapu Lele. Oivin must not have much in hand to leave that Zoroa at the top. Yeah. Um, Adam looking into his hand. Um, oh, that's true. Okay, right. He's drawn, just drawn a Mind Jack here, but... Oh, no, he does actually play two Mind Jacks, Zoroark. I, um, I read the list wrong here, it looks like. It's one Zoroark break and two Mind Jack, so that Mind Jack could actually start to put out some damage um obviously and we see a guzma uh and looks like we might see the yeah. trickster gx here though yeah. oh, no he just uses uh, riotous bm yeah obviously because he has uh, the maximum of amount of pokemon in play so it, it obviously is the maximum damage output and Oivin really needs to hit either, he has got one puzzle in hand, so he needs to either hit that second puzzle or some sort of healing card here to actually keep this Galissapod alive, because I think that's the Pokemon right now that is threatening Adam the most. Oh, we see him field blowing away his own Peril City, and we maybe see an Ultra Ball for a Tapu Lele now to get himself the supporter card he needs. Oh, it's so, it's... And this is, this is the sort of situation I'm talking about. Or even right now, you can tell, is very conflicted about Ultra Balling. You know, yes, the extra ability is nice. Yes, that Tapu Lele can grab him a card, but it does add 50 damage onto the board for Adam. Yeah. Taking that Weavile right the way up to 150. And you still see him struggling. And he does play the Tapu Lele. Um, obviously, grabbing that Guzma. I think that we might see him go for Weavile here. Yeah. Um, taking away that threat, because obviously now it is pushing out a full 150 damage without a choice band and 180 with one and actually you you want to evolve the zora you don't want to have this weak basic there so yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. and we, we see the obvious play here um obviously putting down that tapu lele as well takes the right sb in all the way up to 100 damage actually knocking out that obviously if he didn't play down that lele it would have only been 80 so Adam really on the back foot here. Uh, he does have two Dark Energy attached to Zoroark, so he can use Trickster GX. However, Trickster GX really can't do much here as he can't take a one shot either way. No, not really. Uh, but it, it's interesting that uh, in this Zoroark Rewild deck, you are able to use Trickster GX. Yeah, I think it's uh, something that we miss out quite a lot on in the uh, Zoro pod lists. Um, obviously only playing DC and Grass Energy. Trickster GX doesn't come into play very often. Yeah. Uh, a very similar um, attack to the break to where you are able to copy any attack on the board. And we see a Kukui and... Oh, and the break comes down and we'll probably see here... Devour Field Kukui again. Devoured Field Kukui again, taking him 
right the way up. That is, again, an absolutely fantastic play from Adam. Um, wow, <laughs> just... Yeah, it, it's interesting because these extra 10 damage, they really he make it. he uses crossing cut GX with a <laughs> choice band for 180, wow. Kakui 200, Devoured Field 210, and Adam, an absolutely fantastic play there. Um, again, that Kakui Devoured Field combo, which can I mention is a 1 1 combo. He plays one of each of those cards, has absolutely saved his skin here once again. Insane. Wow. And those are the plays you don't really see coming. Exactly. It's something that you can't really play around either. There's no way that uh, Oivin could have really prepared for that. It was all down to whether he hit the combo cards and. Adam seems to be drawing into them uh, quite efficiently at the minute. But you can also see that his deck is... It's very thin. Yeah, so he he must have known that those cards are still in there. Obviously, he has looked uh, checked his deck already, so he knows what cards are prized and what cards uh, are still available to him. So he must have known his odds and his chances of drawing this combo. I think the only worry for Adam here is though, you can see that he hasn't got many cards at all left, uh, maybe three or four, and there's no obvious route for him here to take as many prizes as possible. Obviously it becomes very much a two-hit KO game now uh, between Rioters Beatins and of course Mind Jack. Um, I think Oivin would be very silly to play down any more Pokemon, falling into the trap yeah. of Mind Jack. Um, uh, if I was him, I'd keep his board as it is, really pushing Adam out of that knockout range. Oh, and he I plays N, taking both players down to four and three prizes. Um, it's actually hilarious to see how small both players' decks are. Uh, yeah. really shows the draw power of trade here. <laughs> With so such a thin deck, you always struggle to even shuffle <laughs> your deck properly. Yeah, it's kind of strange. Yeah. You almost just want to pick it up and just yeah. do it once and put it back <laughs> down because yeah i think adam may it's slightly more than i it looked at first from the uh, bird's eye view perhaps maybe eight to ten cards here and oven looking around the same um it'll be important here that no player gets too greedy and overuses the trade ability yeah as they need as many turns as possible here in order to take their last couple of prizes and we see Oivin drawing into a grass energy. Ah. That could be pretty important. However, the Galissapod is damaged. So I think that it could be quite dangerous to put it back up in the active as well. Because that's pretty much a guaranteed two prizes for Adam. Unless he is able to heal it before he attaches the grass energy. Yeah, and you, you don't really want to... Well... Yeah, but I, it looks like he has to because he hasn't drawn into a double colorless energy. Um, yeah, let's see. Oh, oh, okay, he attaches it to the Lele. Um, Adam draws his card at the top of his deck at speed. I think he knows now that he's in a very good position. As Oivin really doesn't have much going on for him. Uh, the other two cards in his hand didn't look useful at all either. Adam with a second DC in hand as well. He looks to be in a good position. Yeah, he really is in a good position. And uh, let's see. Uh, we see Bridget we see trading trade. away. Oh, two puzzles of time. Uh, he does hit the double puzzle here. Um, I would imagine he'll grab a max potion here, yeah. uh, healing That's that Galissapod, and then moving it back into the active with first impression. Well, maybe we are go also going to see a Guzma. What do you think? Uh, the thing with Guzma is I don't think he's taking a knockout on anything. Uh, with the Zero up with two Dark Energy, that's also got the ability to use Riot as beaten. So I don't know if... Uh, oh, okay, right, we see the Acerola. Um, pretty much the same thing. I think we will probably still see the Max Potion off a double puzzle here if he does end up using it. Yeah. Um, completely resetting his board. And with oh, only eight minutes to go, it. he's not using double puzzle. Wow. Interesting. Do you know if there's a Max Potion in his discard pile? There must be. There must be. I swear that he used it earlier on in the game. Obviously, as we can see, it's not in the prizes. So, unless it's still in deck, and that would be very unfortunate this late in the game for it to be. And Adam's board here just looks... He's got two Zoroark ready to use Riot SB in. He's got a Mind Jack ready to go as well. And he just looks to be in a far better position. And he does use the standing ability here. And he takes the two remaining prizes, the two prizes that Galizapod will give him there. Um, 
Ivan has to be worried now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we see Ivan putting the Tapu Lele in his active position as it already has a grass energy attached to it. It uh, I guess can that's retreat. in that okay, right? I guess. Yeah. Um, I think that was his backup plan because he didn't really want to attach the energy to the damaged Galaxopod. So he thought, well, if I attach it to Tapu Lele, maybe I can use it to retreat it later in the game. Um, I don't know why Oivin isn't very keen to play down these puzzles. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think there's any way for him to win here. He's looking no. through Adam's discard pile, hoping to see some pretty integral cards in there. But I think with the board state that Adam has, unless he's able to put down two enhanced hammers this turn, I think Adam pretty much has it in the bag. Yeah, and uh, he's only playing one enhanced hammer, so, well, he could play it and then puzzle it uh, again on his hand, but still... Uh, there is this Zorak with the basic yeah, uh, with darkness the basic energies, energies that's attached what I mean. to it, so... Uh, it, he's very much in a poor position here. Um, he can't as well go too stir-crazy on his trades, as it looks like he's only got two cards left in deck. Yeah. So, or even really backed in a corner here. Adam's board state looking very threatening, with several different attackers that he can use in several different situations. Yeah, Adam really is prepared for almost everything to happen, and uh, yeah, well... It's just crazy to see the game get to this point. It, it honestly, that Kakui devoured field once again, swung the tempo completely. Um, Adam's got to be very proud of his deck right now, yeah. as that combo is really, really, really paid off uh, in both games. So. Yeah. Oh, and we see pseudo voodoo and counter, counter energy. energy come down. Um, however, the only thing is, is this pseudo voodoo's trade is taking one prize to where Adam can easily take that prize back as well. Um, I don't know if it's as strong as it perhaps would be with a Zoroark, Zoroark GX inactive. But there is this damage Zoroark GX, so if Ivan is able to have the Guzma at the right time, and if Adam is not able to heal a Zoroark, we could, well, Ivan could still at least get a tie out of this game. Uh, yeah, with five minutes left, as we said previously, I really don't think we're going to have time for a game three. Uh, Adam double checking his opponent's discard, probably looking for those Guzmas, seeing how many he's plays, as Oivan really has been um, using them quite a lot in this game, um, getting rid of those Weavals early on. Adam promotes the Zero Arc. Um, I think pretty much here, if he does manage to get a Max Potion or Acerola somehow, the game's pretty much sealed, I yeah, think. Yeah, that, that's it. Uh, but let's see what's going to happen. I am very excited. And Adam retreats here. Uh, he does have the other DC in hand, so he knows that discarding that DC here isn't actually that big of a deal, especially this late on in the game. And he'll probably just reattach that at a later point when he's ready to and use Riot as being And we see the KO on the Cedar Widow. Ooh. This last turn will be very tense. We see Guzma in hand. We see the Guzma in hand. Uh, Oivind desperate for some bench Pokemon and a DC here. Trade. And I think that's oh, game. He doesn't no have energies. the DCE. No energy. Oh, the last DCE oh. was prized, of course. Um, oh, obviously, yeah. he might not have noticed that. Um, looking down, he had everything else he needed, um, apart from the basic Pokemon on the DCE. Uh, very, very well played from Adam there. As we said, uh, the Devoured Field and Kakui coming wow. in clutch in that matchup. Really cool to see. Uh, it's always awesome to watch such intric intricate combos come off like that to, that is. just completely swing the game sideways. And Very it's, exciting. It's also great to see because Adam, I personally never heard of him before Malmur and then he comes with such unique tag cards and was able to, to get the title of regional championships and we see him just entering the tournament as strong as he left the last one. Yeah, I think coming off the back of that, you've got to be feeling confident in your deck. And I think at all points there, even after the first game when he had a bit of a slow start, yeah. um, you just saw the confidence in his face. He knew that his deck had the ability to come out of it, oh, and he knew that his deck was able to pull him through. And obviously we saw that uh, finishing 2-0 in that. Yeah, so uh, let's see if we can get Adam for a short